The game Every Day the Same Dream is completely free and a very short play. Anyone who has not played this game yet should pause this video and play it now. You played it? Good. Okay, let's talk. For such a short and simplistic piece, Every Day the Same Dream is capable of expressing an entire existential crisis. It uses mechanics as storytelling in a way that few other games have achieved. Every small detail in the game tells its own story, from the simple visuals to the use of color. Every Day the Same Dream attempts to show the degrading nature of the monotony of modern life through the crisis of the player's avatar. The first thing that has to be considered is the game's expression of the world. The player's first interactions with the world are twofold, visual and auditory. The visual interaction comes in the form of a grayscale landscape. Visually, there's nothing exciting, for the most part, about the world. It is simple, being composed of few defined polygons and colored as simply as possible. And this is no accident. The simplistic nature of the visuals makes everything look the same. Every car is the same and every person is the same, pressing the concept that whatever exists in the world is interchangeable, and thereby also expendable. The auditory element is that of the music. The music is eerie and haunting, hinting at the unease that is present in the world. It changes bleak visuals into a concerning affair by thematically coloring them. Now that the player has been released into the world, the first thing that they will come into contact with is the dialogue of the game. Two characters talk to the player, the wife and the boss. The sparse dialogue of both characters shows what is considered valuable in this world. Assuming that the player has put on their suit, the wife's dialogue is simply, come on honey, you're late. When the player eventually reaches the boss you are greeted with, you are late, go to your cubicle. These two characters focus on the player's work. Every line of dialogue is pointed towards how the player is performing at their job. Note that there are two key points implicit in this. One is that the player is defined by their relationship to their job. All of the other entities, save one in the game, only interact with the player to move them towards a productive existence, being defined here as the office job. The second is that the player's relationships do not move beyond their job. The only phrase said between the wife and the player that is not work-related is morning, dear. This is an insubstantial phrase that could have the same impact if it was said by a passing stranger. With both of these in mind, it can be seen that at this moment, the player is their job. There is no distinction between the person and their labor within the social structures of the game's world. While the player's social interactions are defined by the player's work, the player does not view itself as being defined by work. This is shown through the cyclical nature of the game. The player can choose to go to work and sit at their cubicle ad infinitum. While on the one hand this shows the futility of this action as it will repeat forever and have no impact on any event in the game, what is more important about the cycle is what is not shown. What is hidden from the player is the player's actual labor. The part of the player's story that is important to the player itself is everything that occurs outside of the player's job. In Wage Labor and Capital, Marx presents an understanding of wage labor as being the selling of a laborer's time and thereby also their life. In the wage labor system, Marx argues that the laborer works that he may keep alive. He does not count the labor itself as part of his life, it is rather a sacrifice of his life. Taking from the Marxist perspective, the player does not see their labor because the labor is not a part of the player's life. Labor in Every Day the Same Dream is only of value to allow the player to continue their existence as the labor continues the cycle within the game. The cycle of labor only remains for so long, as the player is likely to become bored of the cycle. The next inclination of the player is to find something more meaningful, which is precisely what occurs as the player searches out the five alternatives to work. The five alternatives will be analyzed for the sake of this argument as being divided into three subsets. The first subset is the denial of duty. Two alternatives are included in this group. The first is when the player refuses to wear their suit. 
The suit itself is a symbol of the middle class working environment. Thereby, it is also an identifier of the player's job. By rejecting the suit, the player steps beyond the realm of the cycle, choosing an action that actively disrupts the norm. Thereby, the player also rejects their job. What the player is attempting to achieve is a reappropriation of the time that was otherwise sacrificed to his job. With no labor would come no sacrifice and a full ownership of the player's life. It would be a freedom from the destructive cycle of labor. However, a rejection of the player's job is also a rejection of the player's means of living. The other example of the denial of duty is the player's suicide. Here the player leaps from a building after having come to work. Clearly there is a denial of the player's job in the course of killing oneself. Instead of attempting to regain lost time, the player has chosen to deny any usage of their time by annihilating it. Without life there is no labor to be sold or time to be reappropriated. It can be seen that both instances of the denial of duty lead to death whether by having life taken from the player or destroying one's own life. The second subset is the return to nature. The two alternatives in this subset are when the player encounters the cow and when the player considers the leaf. Both of these endings follow the same logic. The player is searching out beauty and connection in the world. The beauty can be seen through the leaf as it is one of the few objects with any color. The player spends time gazing at the colorful object upon interacting with it. Connection is achieved as the player interacts seemingly meaningfully with the cow as well. With no other character does the player ever come into contact. In addition, the cow is an example of an entity beyond the system of wage labor, and the player recognizes this. What is really being considered in this moment is a longing for the state of the cow. In other words, a full ownership of one's life. While these appear meaningful at first, they are actually anything but. The return to nature alternatives are a form of bread and circus for the player. The concept of the bread and circus comes from Roman politics, where populist leaders pass free bread reforms and put on large shows to curry the favor and placate the masses. In this sense, the player is being placated or diverted from focusing on an issue. Unlike the other two subsets of endings, the return to nature does not bring about an end to the cycle. Instead, the two alternatives create a semblance of progress when they are actually only diverting attention from the real issue, the crushing cycle. The final subset of alternatives is the existential crisis. When the player chooses to walk away from work, they come upon a character known as Homeless. The only action of this character is to take you to a quiet place that being a graveyard. Both Homeless and the Graveyard share a common theme in that they are both entities beyond the system of labor. Homeless appears to be poor as he lacks a home, thereby Homeless is likely not working and also separate from the labor system. The Graveyard, on the other hand, is a vacant spot. The purpose of the Graveyard is to be an empty space reserved for death. There is nothing that is less productive than death. This point is further solidified by the graveyard being a quiet place. Assuming that the graveyard is silent, there is no sound of labor, whether that sound come in the form of traffic or actual work. It is the only space in the game that appears untouched by the labor system. In the graveyard, the player is given the space to exist beyond labor as well, but only for a time. The player's dwelling in the graveyard does not actually affect the cycle, thereby acting as a similar force to the return to nature. The player cannot stay in the graveyard because the player is still alive, and thereby has a prerogative to remain alive, and that means to live a life of labor. None of the subsets of alternatives create any meaningful change for the player. The denial of labor does not create freedom for the player, instead there is only death, the obliteration of life, and thereby also freedom at the end of either road. The player's return to nature acts only as a momentary respite from the cycle. In the end, there is nothing gained by considering the beauty or connecting to the labor placement of nature. Neither is there purpose in the existential crisis. The player is trapped within the cycle because they live. While the player may wish to linger in the quiet space, it only ever leads back to the player needing to maintain their life through labor. The question is then left. Is there any means of escape from the cycle? The answer there is yes, but the rationale will have to wait for the next episode. 
Until then, thanks for watching and, as always, enjoy the rest of your day.